On Saturday, Louisiana voters will make uh, an important decision on who will lead this state over the next four years. Incumbent Democrat John Bell Edwards is facing a Republican businessman, first time uh, in an election like this, for the runoff on Saturday, Eddie Rasponi. And Mr. Rasponi joins us this morning. Thank you for coming in. First of all, uh, it is kind of amazing where you came from. You were a virtual unknown when you started this process. Uh, in, in the primary, you beat a sitting U.S. congressman and made it to the runoff. Were you surprised that you got that far? Not really. Not really. It's happening all over the country, really, where business people finally just say, enough is enough. We need to turn our state around. And uh, they've run and been successful. I think the citizens are looking, looking at it different now. They're ready for someone that's not a, a career politician. Well, in, in your first commercials, it, 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 your critics say it just seemed like you were running, that you liked Donald Trump, and you're a Republican, so vote for me. That's pretty much the, you know, what happened since Donald Trump has been elected is that people are starting to realize that we can do better if we elect someone from the outside, a conservative, someone with business skills. So, uh, you know, not beholden to special interests. I think that's resonating with the, the citizens, you know. They really want something different. And we've seen a lot of the ads on television with, with you and, and Governor Edwards sparring. And it, it seems like, you know, it, it's, it's, it's been a dirty campaign so far. It's been, been fairly ugly. but but. How come it doesn't seem like a lot of people are talking about specifics? I mean, let's go ahead and talk about some of the issues that, that need to be talked about. Because, uh, uh, again, some of your critics say that you're, you're heavy on a lot of talk, but, but kind of light on how to solve the problems you say are facing Louisiana. Those critics are generally the liberals because they, they're not really listening. They just want to keep playing that song. You know, I've talked about we have to have legal reform, serious legal reform because our core insurance is the second highest in the country. We're losing thousands of jobs in the oil and gas industry because of lawsuit abuse. I've talked about those things. They just ignore that. Talked about doing something different with our tax structure. All right, so, so when you say talk about doing something, what do you mean talk about, uh, do, do something? What are your exact plans? Well, you can't just speak to exact plans to the citizens in a debate. You have to talk about legal reform. We have specifics that we have to address to move forward. There are executive orders that you can do. It's in your Department of Natural Resources, for instance, that they have to do their job. For instance, there's, over, there's around 3,000 permits that the trial lawyers, the liberal trial lawyers, are suing about that were not followed. But the Department of Natural Resources in four years has not reviewed not one of them because the governor is in there and completely beholden to them. And so they're not reviewing those things. The Department of Natural Resources has that responsibility, but you can't just put that in a 30-second ad or you, when you're sitting there trying to say it in a debate or a forum and the governor decides to tell you that's all lies and, you know, you shut things down. So. All right. Well, let's talk about health care because uh, Governor Edwards says uh, if you are elected, hundreds of thousands of people will be kicked off Louisiana's Medicaid expansion program. Again, that's the typical MO for the liberal career politicians. Every, every election, the Democrats start doing this fear mongering, I call it. It's not true. Let me say this. So, right so now, you would keep the Medicaid expansion? expansion? Of course. We've, I've said that over and over again. What I'm going to do, though, is remove the, the waste and the fraud out of it because we found out afterwards that there was like 60-some thousand people that didn't even qualify. And there was actually 1,600 that were making over 100,000 a year. So that's unacceptable because the program is not sustainable if we continue to have waste and fraud. That's what I've said over and over again. So, and then they come out and say, well, you're going to kick 300,000 people off. That, that's, that's just fear-mongering again. That's all that is, is fear-mongering. And that's not the only things they do. But they do that every time. And, and so uh, let's talk about President Trump is coming back into Louisiana tonight. Yes. Up in uh, Bossier City to, to campaign for you again. Now, now, he called John Bell Edwards a radical liberal. Do you think John Bell Edwards is a radical liberal? Of course he is. Well, what, would you, what, what, is what is your definition of a radical liberal? A lab, that wants to grow government. Government is the answer to everything. And raising taxes is the answer to that. And that's what the liberals do. And that's, that's what he's exactly done. And then he's perfectly right in calling him out. And the other thing is all of his dollars and cents, I mean millions of dollars, over $10 million, have come from the liberal radical Democratic Party on the national level, the ones that want to do away with airplanes, trains, and cows, the same ones that want to go after this witch hunt continuously against the president, those are the ones that are pouring millions of dollars into his campaign. And that, and the plaintiff attorneys, 
that are causing us to have the second highest car insurance in the country and also killing thousands of jobs in oil and gas. And quickly, you have, you have criticized him for, for raising taxes. He did that with a, a Republican legislature. They did wipe out a $2 billion deficit, and there's a surplus now. Well, I call that overtaxation. But it took seven special sessions. He wanted $10 billion. He finally settled for a lot less. And the, the fact that he sent letters to the elderly in nursing homes very confusing letter that insinuated that they would have to be kicked out of the nursing home if we didn't raise taxes. And then he went after the, the obviously, even mentioned LSU football. He's the only governor that's ever cut tops. Cut it, they wanted to cut it $230 million. So, right. I mean, these are the fear mongering things you do to force those things through. And it took seven, seven special sessions, and he would have wanted twice as much with the Republican legislature. All right, yeah. that'll have to be the last word. Mr. Responding, thank you for coming in. We appreciate it. Thank you it. for having and me. Good luck Eric. on Saturday. I appreciate it.